Oh, yeah, right. So I'm Michael Ferrari, I'm a uh, software engineer at Bollywoods, and I'm going to talk about Crash today and um, when we're in line to use it. So what is Crash CD? It's the first question many people might be asking. Um, it's a NoSQL document store. It was first released in 2005 and it was initially built by people at IBM. Currently today it's an open source project uh, and it's managed in the Apache project. And uh, it's generally replication focused, which I'll get into later on. Uh, it's eventually consistent. Uh, asset semantics are baked in. Um, for those that haven't heard of it, it's generally a concept around consistency. Uh, of everything there. Um, it's powerful distribution capabilities built in, which are related to its replication focus. Uh, it doesn't need necessarily a client, it actually has its own built in HTTP API. And it's sort of argued to be one of the first new scale databases, but that means sort of modern new scale databases, like model, that kind of thing, all of them. So, all their ideas from the pouch. So, uh, on this pouch, a little bit further. Uh, in Crouch, data is segmented into lots of separate databases. You can see in the screenshot below, there's lots of little app DBs here. I'll get into what those are and how they relate to Bollywood later. Uh, and in each of those databases, we store data in JSON documents. Um, each of the databases will have its own MapReduce indexes, which can be quite useful uh, if you want to do a lot of like, very separate data, multi-tenancy data, and things like that. Again, a little bit more about uh, Crouch to be about. Do both. Um, so each document in CrowdCB stores a tree of its revisions. And we don't just write to this a JSON blob, uh, but that uh, uh, document, we store a tree of everything that has happened to it, essentially like Git. So we have a Git revision tree for each document. Um, the documents can be rolled back uh, to previous versions using the revision that comes, the revision that comes with the document. Um, and that can be done between the local and the remote databases and a cluster. Um, the, the versioning allows for very, very smart replications because we can tell, like, this is like Git, we can tell what has changed between two databases and then we can sync the two. So you can do very fast updates between two nodes in a cluster. Um, and there's some other stuff that we'll, we'll come into later, but like, that's quite useful. Um, the replication protocol uh, that CrashDB is based on is really around creating a very relaxing data architecture. It's about creating very redundant systems to allow you to. Um, have a safe storage for all your data. And that was a core ethos of Couch, you can see in there. Well, without Couch to be relaxed, it's kind of what they're all about. So they're trying to make data storage as relaxing as possible, which, you know, it's only, only really so relaxing. But, uh, so, uh, I don't know if I can play the video here. Uh, or this video, can I start that up? Just, there we go. So, just a quick video here to show some replication in action. Um, I'm taking one of the uh, app databases here and putting a replication for it, um, saying that I want to uh, take this database here and put in some details about it. Um, which, come on, Michael, be a little bit faster. Uh, <laughs> so, get in some data here, uh, set up some auth authentication to access that database, and then I say that I want to create uh, a new database, uh, and I'll put in some details about that. In these instances, it's going to be local, it can be remote, it can be on a completely different AC, it can be halfway across the world. The eventually consistent nature of it means that that doesn't actually create a performance concern. You can deal with conflicts later, which you know is a problem, but CrowdSpeed tries to make that as easy as possible. Um, and you can see here when can uh, configure continuous uh, replication. This is a pretty cool feature of Couch. Um, the, these databases are right in sync. Any change that occurs in one database will be brought over to the other. Um, so you can see here, I'm going into uh, the database that I'm replicating from. I create a document, and then if I jump back over to the other database, uh, I'm sure that it exists. I jump back over to the new database, and you can see that that document is there. So, replication, uh, it's very smart, <laughs> and it, those, it will keep everything in sync from that point forward. So, why would you use CrowdCB? That's the sort of the next question here. Um, so, why do you use Crouch? Um, the master to master, it, it uses a master to master replication. There are no nodes that aren't fully capable. Every single node in a CrowdCB cluster can do everything. If one goes down, you don't have a problem. It, it, it can, you can just immediately switch over to another node and there'll be no issues. Um, it's very simple to implement the replication protocol, and some libraries have used that to do some pretty interesting stuff that I'll cover very quickly later on. Um, scaling is very simple because of the replication protocol. We can take a backup of one of our nodes, create a new node off that, and then link it to the cluster, and it'll automatically work out the differences, automatically replicate all the databases, bring itself up to 
uh, order and then put itself online for uh, in front of the load balancer to be used, uh, or with the load balancer, uh, make the load balancer aware that it's, it's capable and can be used at that point. And that can be very quick, you can bring a new load online even in a multi terabyte system in, in, in an hour, so it's not very, it's not very slow, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, the uh, it, very flexible map reduced querying in uh, Couch because the views that you use to access everything are written in JavaScript. You can write a JavaScript view which accesses documents, picks out a particular set of fields that we want to query, and then build an index off those. So you can do some very smart indexing using JavaScript and uh, queries that get executed basically each time a document is written to the database. That's highly extensible uh, using integrations like Pluto, which is a Lucene querying index, so we can add a full text uh, searching system into Couch using that, and CouchDB for offline data, which will cover a little bit later on. Uh, so, uh, again, we'll tell you a little bit more about when to use Um If you're working with highly segmented data, data that you don't really want to interact very much, Couch is great on it. You can have millions, billions of uh, databases in your cluster and actually be okay with that. Yeah, comparing that to, say, like an SQL database, where let's say you wanted to have a million tables, that'd be kind of crazy. Um, Couch can do stuff like that, which there's sometimes scenarios that you might want to segment your data like that. Uh, if you want to keep your data and services redundancy, like if your services have to be online constantly um, and you need to completely your redundant data store, Couch is great at that. You can set up nodes all over the place and it'll just keep everything in sync and keep everything managed and you'll, you will should, in theory, have a very solid data store. Um, you can deploy it at a very large multi, uh, multi AC scale because of the, uh, uh, the eventually consistent picture of it. Expanding out across a very large zone doesn't actually cause any latency issues. Uh, you will need to resolve, resolve conflicts if you have very high write throughput uh, on, say, one document. But uh, generally, if you design it right, you can work that. Um, working with data offline, we'll cover that a little bit later. <coughs> anyway, I keep mentioning that, PouchDB, we'll come back to that, it's very cool. Um, you can export a database from Couch using an application system. You can take it to a text file, take it offline, move it to another database, do all sorts of interesting stuff with it. Filter it offline, all that kind of thing. But again, kind of fiddly to do. You can do it as a production. So you can make this part of your production system. It's not just a migration. Um, bad times to use Couch. Pretty heavy scenarios like all app type applications. Um, not really very good. It'd be better to stick to SQL. Uh, if you need strong consistency, that, then uh, it's, again, it's a consistent. It's not a choice. Uh, working with heavy relational data sets, uh, again, SQL databases are uh, better. And single load performance, if you're worried about very, very high speed writes and reads, Couch is fastest and bound. It doesn't offer anything necessarily, because again, it's trying to get a very redundant data store, and that's not something that you'll want to use Couch for. So, just a quick point about uh, OLTP versus OLAP. I was talking to my friend who said, you've heard these terms before. Uh, you can generally break down your data needs to some extent into these two types of applications OLTP, online transaction processing, regular small transactions. Emphasis on fast rights and ensuring data integrity. <coughs> and, uh, it talk a lot more messaging platform sensor data collection. OLAP uh, is the other side of it, which is uh, online analytical processing. Uh, you'll generally have very complex queries, it'll be very relational, uh, it'll be things like reporting tools and business analytics, just a little useful nugget. You can usually use that to sort of decide uh, when the data store might be the right choice for you. This is a kind of a little thing you can think about at the architectural phase in designing the system. So, where do you use PouchDB? Uh, is the next version. A little tiny bit about BodyBase quickly. BodyBase is a low code internal app building tool. Uh, we've been using CouchDB as our primary data source for two plus years now. Um, we use it in both, we use Couch in both our self host and our cloud based systems. Um, each app uh, in the BodyBase system is its own CouchDB database with pages, data queries, automations, everything like that to find its JSON documents. That gives its revision history for everything. Uh, we use replication to sync between a development and a production app. So when someone says they want to take their app that they're building into production, we can just sync that database uh, using replication. And uh, we can perform app uh, backups, exports, and so on using TwitchDB, which is an offline thing that we'll keep covering one last kind of slide in a second. Um, just as an example of the scale, we've deployed TwitchDB app. Currently, we have 50,000 apps running on our body based cloud um, using TwitchDB. So we have 50,000 different apps that people have built with. A large number of users in each of those apps uh, that people are using. Um, an example of one self hosted system was in Bulgaria over the course of a week. We helped build a system using BodyBase that managed 100,000 Ukrainian refugees' information as they came into the country during a very 
it was at the start of the Ukrainian uh, Russian War. Um, and uh, we were able to do that with Kite because of its multi node capability. We were working at a very large scale and we were able to fit everything into Kite to scale back correctly. In, in this case, um, their MySQL, we actually fell over multiple times during all the writes from all the data coming from all those users from get in and upload their information. So it's just like comparison and Kite was handled out with no sweat. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a little point there. If anyone's interested in hearing more about that, uh, there's a little link there where you can read more about what happened there. Uh, so, yes, just one final thing about <laughs> I keep mentioning it, it's very useful. PouchDB is a JavaScript uh, only implementation of the uh, PouchDB replication protocol. We can take um, a full PouchDB database into an IndexedDB store in the browser. We can put it against Redis. We can put it on the file system using LevelDB. Um, we can replicate that down offline or something like that, fit it with it, and then replicate it back into the PHP system. It's quite useful if you want to do offline data. Say that's you, if you were working in a shipping company, you take your data off, you go out on a ship, you've got no internet, you fit it with it, and you come back online, you can push that data back up to Couch and uh, resolve the conflicts and so on, and then you'll have your data back merged together in, uh, in Couch. Um, PHP also allows you to get all the benefits of things like JS MapReduce and everything else JS implemented, so we can do everything you can do in Couch in Couch, but it's a full JS native implementation. So, conclusion. Um, PHP can be used uh, to create very redundant and scalable data source. Um, it can be used to service in very niche use cases around very multi tenant data. You want to create very separate scaled data. Um, and uh, all, when you're working with data offline, PHP plus PouchDB, as I keep mentioning, it's great, it's class, it's a very cool tool. If you ever need to work with offline data, think about it. Um, and uh, if you know how you're going to access your data in a well TP type scenario uh, up front, then you can use MapReduce indexes up front, create them, and do some very smart querying and indexing that way. And again, finish, PHP wants you to relax. That's their whole focus. So if you ever want relaxing data storage, maybe give it a so, there you go. Thank you very much.